All right, let's talk about retirement planning at 50 and what you need to know if you're going to retire early or how do you know if you can retire early. We're talking about retirement planning at 50, what it takes to retire early or how to retire early if you're doing retirement planning at 50 because that's the goal. We don't want to work until we're dead. We want to retire when it makes the most sense for us and our family so we can enjoy our kids, our grandkids, we can travel and we can live off our retirement savings and our retirement income. But what does it take and how do we do it? All right, the first thing you want to think about if you're doing retirement planning at 50, how can I retire early, is when are you going to take Social Security? Now, I understand that if you're thinking about retiring at 55 or asking the question, can I retire at 55, Social Security is something that is maybe a decade or more away. But it is essential to understand when are you going to take Social Security. Let me explain why. If you take Social Security at 62 years old, you're only going to get 70% of your full retirement benefit. If you take Social Security at your full retirement age, and let's say for this video that age is 67, then you're going to get 100% of your full retirement benefit. And if you wait to age 70, if you're an overachiever, a broccoli eater, then you're gonna get 124% of your full retirement benefit. Now, obviously, you can take Social Security at any age between ages 62 and 70. It doesn't make sense to take it past 70. So you can plan to take Social Security at 63, 64, 65, 66, 68, 69, any of those ages between 62 and 70. But if you're doing retirement planning at 50 and asking the question, how can I retire early? You want to know when am I going to start taking Social Security? Why, Drew? Why do I want to know when I'm going to take Social Security? Well, here's the easy answer. Where is your retirement income going to come from from age 55 to Social Security? Are you going to take money out of your IRA, out of your 401k using the rule of 55? Are you going to take money out of a taxable brokerage account? Are you going to take it from a home sale, a pension, cash? Where is your retirement income going to come from? How long can taking retirement income out of that investment last? How long is that going to last? For example, let's say you've got a million dollars, okay, in your 401k and you want to retire at the age of 55. Well, you're going to use the rule of 55. But let's say you need $60,000 a year for retirement income with inflation. And inflation's at 3.24%. So this $60,000 is going to grow every year by 3.24%. Well, $60,000 coming out of a million dollars is a 6% withdrawal rate meaning you are going to withdraw 6% of your retirement income from your retirement investing account. Now, the stock market has averaged 8% over the last 50 years. It's not a geometric return, so it's not an 8%, 8%, 8%. It's a very volatile. We might be up 30% one year and down 20% the next, but you're still going to need your $60,000 a year to live off plus inflation, right? So what is this million dollars going to look like in the next decade? When are we going to take Social Security? Are you going to take Social Security at 62, 67, or 70, or somewhere in between? You want to know this because at some point you've got to turn the spigot off of this million dollars because 6% coming out is not going to last your entire retirement. And so you want to know where's my next source of retirement income coming from because Social Security is going to help bridge your retirement income plan. So now if we know at 55 we're going to have to take out retirement income for 12 years, we've got a better plan. 
at a million dollars, we know if we make 6% a year, we would draw 6% a year. That's basically going to be a million dollars in 12 years. But what if we take out 6% a year and we only return 4% a year on our retirement investing accounts? How much money is going to be in our retirement investing accounts when we get to Social Security? What if the market tanks? the first couple years of our retirement and we're taking out that $60,000 a year but now instead of it being a million dollars it's $800,000 or $700,000. Now when are we going to take Social Security? What's the plan? Because I always tell clients claiming Social Security when you're going to retire early claiming Social Security is the number one thing you want to have planned out but it needs to be a flexible plan. That's why when we run a financial EKG, especially for someone who's wanting to retire early or asking the question, can I retire at 55? We're gonna go through multiple scenarios. I'm gonna say, listen, in a perfect world, in a rainbows and unicorns world, you're gonna take Social Security at 67. This is what your retirement investments are gonna look like, earning a geometric easy six, 7% a year. But we know the world doesn't work in rainbows and unicorns, right? It's, it normally works in thunderstorms and well, I don't know what the opposite of a unicorn would be, but maybe a Tyrannosaurus Rex. So we have to look at our retirement income strategy the same way. If the market starts to fall early in our retirement, are we going to take Social Security early to help plug the spigot? of our retirement income coming off our retirement investing accounts. That's why we want to run multiple scenarios when we're running a financial EKG. And another area you want to be thinking about when you're claiming Social Security or you're doing retirement planning at 50 and deciding when to claim Social Security is your spouse's Social Security benefit. Because many of you might have a spouse who either one, stayed home as the homemaker or two, worked in a job that did not generate the same amount of income that your job generated. And so something that you need to be thinking about, especially when you're doing your retirement planning and running your different scenarios for, can I retire at 55? When am I gonna claim Social Security? Is that gonna be at 67 or 62? You need to think about, what about my spouse's Social Security benefit? Because spousal Social Security benefits are so very important. Now, your spouse, can get up to 50% of your full retirement benefit. Now, in order for your spouse to get 50% of your full retirement benefit, they must claim Social Security at their full retirement age and you must already be collecting Social Security. So if you're younger than your spouse, you must already be collecting Social Security for them to claim a spousal benefit. Now they can claim a spousal benefit at 62 or earlier than 67, but if they do that, it's a reduced benefit. The best thing when it comes to spousal benefits is to claim at 67 and get 50% of the higher earners social security benefit. This also works if you are divorced. So if you are divorced and you are not remarried and you are over the age of 62 and your social security benefit is less than half of your ex-spouse's social security benefit and their marriage status does not matter, you could claim up to 50% of their social security benefit as well. Again, I encourage you to wait to 67 to do that, which is why you want to have a retirement plan. A financial EKG is what we call it for our clients and those individuals who contact us because we want to look at the different scenarios. What if I claim this spousal benefit at 62? How long is my retirement income going to last or at 67? And what about the different scenarios if the market's down 10, 20, 30%? So social security is not just an easy like, oh, I'm going to take it at this age. It is a complex strategy that needs a tactical response, especially if you're thinking about, can I retire at 55? And you're doing retirement planning at 50. All right, so if you're doing retirement planning at 50 and asking yourself, how can I retire earlier? What do I need to do to retire earlier? One of the other things you need to be thinking about is, how am I going to, how am I going to take 
retirement income out of my retirement investing accounts? What's my strategy for withdrawing retirement income? We've already talked about having a strategy for Social Security. What's our strategy for taking retirement income off of our retirement investing accounts? Now, there's a few strategies that are a good rule of thumb to follow, and let me go through those for a minute. The first one is the 4% rule. And what the 4% rule says is that you're able to take 4% off of your retirement investing accounts for the rest of your life for at least 30 years with inflation and your retirement investing accounts should not, should not run out of money. Now, think about this. If you're asking the question, can I retire at 55? And the 4% rule says it only lasts for 30 years. What age does that put you at when you run out of money? 85. Now, I don't know about you. I got an 81-year-old grandma. I don't think she's going to want to go back to work to supplement her retirement income at 85. So if you're betting on the 4% rule going into retiring early, I think you need to rethink your retirement income strategy. The new rule says it's more like 2.3%. So instead of it being a 4% rule, it really should be called a 2.3% rule with inflation. So think about this on a, let's put this in numbers for a minute. You've got a million dollars, I missed a zero, in your 401k, 4% of that, right, is $40,000 with inflation, okay? So inflation is going to add about $1,600 on that in the next year, and then you just keep adding that up. 2.3% is only $23,000 with inflation. So you see, that's a $17,000 difference using the 4% rule when you're thinking about what's the strategy that I'm going to use for my retirement income. I don't know a lot of my personal clients who only need $23,000 a year at 55. Maybe when they get on Social Security, they only need $23,000 a year because they're getting Social Security. But if you're going to retire early, the average retirement income need in America today is about $55,000. Here in Florida, it's actually $56,000 is the average retirement income that a retiree needs. So you really need to be thinking about what's my retirement income strategy. And I don't want to hear you say, Oh, I'm going to bounce my last check on the day I die. You, you've been talking to God. I need to know your checkout date if we're going to do that. Because most of you are going to live a lot longer than you expect. So we've got to look at this. What's our strategy for taking retirement income? How long is it going to last? Again, that's why you want to run multiple scenarios when you're doing your retirement planning. Because you want to say, hey, if I run it at 4%, what's it going to look like? If I run it at 2.3%, or if I run it at 6%, how long is this retirement income going to last? Other things you have to think about, if you're asking yourself, can I retire at 55, how are you going to get your money out of your retirement investing accounts? How are you going to do it? Let me, let me grab the eraser real quick. Let me show you what I mean. Because now that we've settled on percentage, like how much we need and how long it's going to last and when, is that going to, when are we going to take Social Security based on that, now we have to ask ourselves from a tax qualification standpoint, how are we going to get the money out of our accounts? Because if you're like most retirees, most of your retirement investing accounts are in 401ks, IRAs, and Roth IRAs. Now, me and you know this because you're watching my video, but what is the stipulation on a 401k, an IRA, and a Roth IRA if you're under the age of 59 and a half? You can't touch that money without a 10% penalty. Now, before you make a comment, we're going to talk about ways that you can touch your money without a penalty if you're asking the question, can I retire at 55? I want to retire early. How do I do it? Well, the first way you do it is through the rule of 55. Now, I've talked extensively about the rule of 55 on this channel. I have used the rule of 55 for my clients. I love the rule of 55. 
but there's some caveats to it and you have to understand it completely. So the rule of 55 says if you have a current 401k at your job and you are 55 years or older, you can actually use your current 401k for retirement income without a penalty. So if you turn 55 in March of this year and you say, you know what, I wanna retire, you can actually use that current 401k for retirement income. You can use it to live off of under the age of 59 and a half and you won't pay a 10% penalty. Now you will pay taxes, but you will not pay a penalty. But here's the thing most people don't think about. This does not include your old 401ks. This does not include your IRAs that are at your brokerage account. It only includes your current 401k. Well, what if you are like most Americans and you switch jobs six or seven times throughout your career and you've got four old 401ks? Well, before you decide to retire or quit or be terminated, do a little trick. Let's say this is your current 401k. This is your current 401k, all right? And this is a basket of your old 401ks or IRAs. And you go, you know what? I want to retire at 55. But if you touch this money, this old 401ks and IRAs, and you're under the age of 59 and a half, you're going to pay a 10% penalty along with your taxes. And if you have your current 401k, but your income coming out of this won't make it to 59 and a half, meaning there's not enough money in here to sustain you to, so you can start using this money over the age of 59 and a half, what are you going to do? You almost feel stuck. You're like, well, I, I guess I can just take it out of here and get the 10% penalty. No, no, here's the tip. Take this money and reverse rollover, reverse rollover, into your current 401k. Now you have to talk to your plan administrator to make sure they allow you to do that. A lot of 401ks I work with, they do allow you to do a reverse rollover. And now you've got enough money in your current 401k. Now you gotta do this before you quit or get terminated or retire. But now you've got enough money in your current 401k to hopefully bridge the gap to social security and the rest of your retirement. Again, it's why you want to have a retirement income plan. You want to understand your strategies. Maybe you don't have to do this. Maybe the current 401k, if you've done your homework, if you have a financial EKG, will allow you to get to 60 and then you can start using this money over here for retirement income. But you don't know that unless you have a retirement income plan. All right, so what's the other option? So you're under the age of 59 and a half you are 55 years old or you're 52 you're asking can i retire at 55 what's the other option well let's use this let's leave this money up here we've got our current 401k and we've got old 401ks and iras and let's just assume for practical purposes that the current 401k will not allow you to do a reverse rollover what are you going to do you want to retire at 55 all your money's in 401ks and iras what do you do well you can do what they call a 72T. Now, a 72T is a special tax provision in the IRS code that allows you to set up substantially equal periodic payments from your IRA or from multiple IRAs and use that money for retirement income without the 10% penalty. Now, here's the stipulation because the IRS giveth and the IRS taketh away. The stipulation is you have to do it for five years or 59 and a half, whichever is longer. So if you're doing retirement planning at 50 and you're saying, I'm going to retire at 50 and I'm going to use a 72T, you've got to do a 72T for 10 years. All right. Now, if your age is 55, right, uh, and you want to do a 72T, you only have to do it five years five years or age 59 and a half, whichever is longer, right? So we look at our 72T and we ask ourselves, does it make sense to do this? Now, 72Ts can be updated on an annual basis. There's three different schedules that the IRS allows you to do when it comes to a 72T. I'm not gonna get into those three different schedules, but they can be updated on an annual basis based on market fluctuations. It's a 1231 value of your account in the previous year. There's a lot that goes into a 72T. Make sure 
sure you talk to your CPA, your tax accountant, or call me. Again, we want to have a retirement income plan to understand how do we need to de designate our IRA assets because if we're going to use a 72T to do a can I retire at 55, we want to make sure it's set up a, a appropriately perfect, right? We want to make sure it's set up right because here's the reason. With a 72T, the IRS says this, we're not going to penalize you if you take substantially equal periodic payments out of your IRA for the allotted time frame. But, 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 if you screw it up, we're going to penalize you 10%. Not just in the year that you screwed it up, but for every year that you took a 72T payment. So if you've been doing a 72T for seven years and you screw it up in the eight, eighth year, the IRS says, give us that 10% penalty for eight years right now. So it's very important if you're doing a 72T to do it right okay so there's up those are the biggest two retirement income strategies if you're going to retire at 55 remember we want to know four percent rule how much are we taking out when are we going to bridge the gap to social security and then we got to ask ourselves where's our money going to come from and how are we going to get money out of our retirement investing accounts and do it the most tax efficiently right who wants to go into retirement pay a ton of taxes so we want to do it the most tax efficiently and we're asking ourselves, how can I retire earlier? What do I need to do to retire earlier? How I like to ask it, can I retire at 55? And we're going to look at your retirement investing strategy or your retirement investing accounts. And I want to ask you a few questions to give you a good concept of your retirement investing as you get closer to retirement and as you step into retirement in those first few years, all right? So if we're doing retirement planning at 50, one of the first questions that I like to ask, especially when I'm doing a financial EKG for someone, is how much risk do you wanna take on your money? How much risk do you wanna take on your 401k, on your IRA, on your Roth IRA? How much risk do you want to take? Now, a lot of people will say, well, hey, Drew, I'm okay with risking 10% or I'm okay with risking 20% on my retirement investments. And I'll say, oh, okay, I hate percentages. Let's put it in dollar terms. How much money are you willing to lose in your retirement investing accounts now and when you get into retirement? Now, most people will say, well, I don't want to lose anything. And I'll say, well, you just told me that you're okay with losing 20% of your retirement investing accounts. And if you have a million dollars in your 401k, that million dollars would look like $800,000 if the market were to go down 20%. How does that make you feel? I don't like that is what I get most of the time. And another answer I always get, just let me sidebar this is, well, Drew, that's not a permanent loss. It's, it's a paper loss because the market will come back. Yeah, but if you're in retirement and your million dollars goes to 800,000 and you're taking retirement income out of that 800,000, it's gonna take a lot longer for it to come back than you realize. So we have to ask ourselves, how much risk do we want on our retirement investments? Because the biggest risk in retirement when it comes to your investments is what they call sequence of return risk. And essentially, what sequence of return risk is, is that in the first few years of your retirement, the market goes down for multiple years. True, that's not going to happen to me. The market always recovers. Well, in the year 2000, the market was down for three straight years. 2001, 2002, and 2003. 2004, 2005, 2006, and 2007 were pretty darn good years until 2008 when the market was down 2008 and 2009. So if you retired in those years, you, you felt multiple down years in the stock market. And so if you're pulling retirement income off of your retirement investments and you have multiple down years, the return risk is that your retirement strategy, your retirement income strategy is a lot shorter now than it was previously, which is why we wanna run multiple scenarios when we're doing retirement planning to say, okay, if we have a geometric return of four, five, or 6%, which just easily means I earn 4% a year, I earn 5% a year, I earn 6% a year, how long is my retirement income gonna last? How long are my retirement investments gonna last? What's my money gonna look like when I get older, basically? 
But we also want to look at historical norms. What if the market, what if the stock market does what it did from 2000 to 2010, which was a lost decade. The market actually finished about negative four for that 10 years. What's my retirement investments or what's my, what's my retirement investment strategy if that happens? Now that's a lost decade, probably one of the worst decades we'll ever see. But if you look at the 1960s to 1982, that was about 15 years where we had basically stagnant growth because of high inflation. I don't know, does anybody, don't anybody see inflation these days? High inflation and there was really no growth of the overall market. So you have to ask yourself, what's my retirement investing strategy going to look like if the market returns what it's done historically? Because history doesn't always repeat, but it does rhyme. So we want to look at that, especially when it comes to our retirement investing accounts. How much risk do we want to take on our money? The other question I always like to ask people is how are you investing now that you are retired? How are you investing? Let me see if I can talk and write at the same time. How are you investing now that you are retired or now that you're going to be retired? So if you're doing retirement planning at 50 and you're thinking about retiring at 55, you got about a five year window before you retire. How much volatility do you want on your money between now and 55? Do you want the market to dictate when you retire or do you want to dictate when you, dictate when you retire? Well, I'm 37 years old, okay? So my retirement investing strategy is a lot different from yours if you're 50 or 55. I'm all in. I'm trying to hit home runs. I want to knock the ball out of the park. You need to be hitting singles and doubles. Right? We don't need it. If we hit a home run, great. You fell into one. But we want to hit singles and doubles and be more consistent. Because the worst thing to happen, I had this happen to a client of mine in Colorado. He came to me. He said, Drew, I want to do a financial EKG. I want to retire tomorrow. I said, all right, let's do this financial EKG. When we got, when we were doing the EKG in the middle of doing this financial EKG, the S&P 500 fell 20%. And because of the market loss on his investments, because of how he was invested, he was not able to retire in the year that he wanted to. The strategy actually pushed him out a few years because of his market losses. And when's the market going to recover? No one really knows. Yes, it will recover, but when? When? I don't know. I'm not God. I don't know when it's going to recover. All I know is it will, but we... we we don't know when. We don't know when. So we want to have a strategy so that we, if we want to retire at 55, if that's our goal, can I retire at 55, our investment strategy fits our risk tolerance and when we want to retire. Think about it on like a sliding scale. Let me grab my eraser here again. Think about it on a sliding scale. And this is how I, this is a simple scenario. I, I run a, a very complex investment strategy approach for clients who are trying to retire. We look at their investments. We want to look at the risk and the expenses and the exposure to overall markets. But a simple explanation to this is this. This is ultimate growth and risk. All right, this dot, ultimate growth and risk. This is minimal growth and risk. I think I spelled minimal. I think I spelled it right. Hopefully my English teacher's not watching. So ultimate growth and risk and minimal growth and risk. Okay. Ultimate growth and risk. Let's say you're 20. Okay. Let's just say you started working. You're 20 years old. Minimal growth and risk is like I'm retired. Like it's not that you don't want to grow your money in retirement. It's just like I don't need to take as much risk in retirement. And so as you're aging, you're sliding your scale. So if your desired retirement age is 55 years old, your retirement strategy at 55 should not be somewhere up here. Because you don't want ultimate growth and risk if you're retiring at 55 and you're going to use your investing accounts for retirement income. You want it to be somewhere down here because you want to make sure that money's going to be there that you're not going to have to go back to work at 65 or 70 or 80 or 85. You want to make sure your retirement investing accounts are there for you throughout your retirement. All right. Well, hey, thank you so much for watching today. Hope this helped retirement planning at 50. God bless. Bye-bye.